Hi, my name is Adam Chandler, and I'm going to walk you through expanding on, on the Rollerball tutorial mechanics. Um, we want to have more options for level design and just more interesting things to work with uh, to make, you know, make the level more fun and um, complex. So first thing we're going to do, we need to make a few changes to the player. Uh, and, the and the three primary changes we're going to make is I'm going to change the player tag so that we can um, actually detect it off of things. So maybe we enter a trigger. We, we may want to know for sure that it was the player that entered that and not something else. Um, we're also gonna mess with the physics to make sure that our ball, if, if it moves too quickly, it won't pass through any walls um, or floors or, or whatever. And the final thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, enforce a max speed on the player. Right now, the way it works is if you hold down a button, it will continue to add force until that player is just moving at supersonic speed. Uh, and we may not, we, we may not want that necessarily. I don't, I don't think that I want that for this project. So, <clears throat> um, I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So the first part is the tag. Um, this one's pretty easy. Normally when you make a tag, you would have to expand the tag over here and do add tag and uh, make a new one, just like we did with the pickups. Um, like for example, if you wanted to make an enemy, you could uh, make another one here, call it enemy. And then every single enemy inside of your level, you'd want to make sure that this thing was tagged um, enemy. And then you just change the tag over here and put that on enemy. Um, right now, if you click our player, uh, our, ta our player is untagged, meaning that it doesn't have anything that we can use to detect it with. So what I'm gonna do, um, you'll notice that player is a tag that already comes default with, with Unity uh, or, or with the default Unity project setup. So I'm just going to select the player, um, do the tag dropdown and click there. Okay, so now our player is tagged player. And if we ever want to detect if this is the player, um, we can just access the game object and compare tag. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that through code a little bit later. The second part, we want to change the collision detection on the player. I mentioned that if the player is moving too quickly, what's happening right now with the rigid body is um, if we were to go really, 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 really fast, like let's say that we're dropping and, and we're using gravity, and we've hit terminal velocity, right? We're going straight through the floor, just like this. And um, we, we check every single frame to detect the new position of the ball. What would happen right now is if we were falling too quickly, it would check here, next frame, it would check here, it would check here, and so forth. But when it gets to here, if between frames the ball travels from here to here, it's going to miss the collision, right? The, the collider is never going to collide with, with the wall right here. So it's, it's just going to pass straight through the floor and this would not be good behavior. Um, so to fix that, all we're going to do is just one little bitty checkbox thingy over on the player. Make sure you have the player selected. I'm just going to save my game real quick. Um, make sure you have the player selected. Go to rigid body. Discrete is the default and it's super performant and efficient. Um, but it will have this behavior. Usually it's not an issue, uh, but on the player in particular, I do like to um, make sure that I have this, particularly in a, in a rigid body physics-based game. Um, go to collision detection and change this to continuous dynamic. Um, this means that we want continuous detection. We want to calculate uh, between two points in addition to the, the frame here and frame here, we want it to detect everything in between. So it would actually um, process this correctly, usually. Uh, so it's collision detection, continuous dynamic. This is a moving object that I want continuous detection on. Um, anything else, if, if I did want this, um, you know, if, if I had other things that were an issue, let's say this particular floor, um, you know, you could, you could mess with that. So for now, just change this to continuous dynamic and that should, um, solve your initial problems. And maybe you wouldn't have those problems anyway. It's just kind of a uh, double check. So the third thing I mentioned that I want to do is I want to enforce a max speed on my player. And the easiest way to do that is just to, um, we're going to add another custom function here. This should, this should be what you have uh, based off of the player tutorial. 
I'm sorry, the rollerball tutorial. So all I'm gonna do is right here in fixed update, whenever I update my move horizontal and I update my move vertical, I'm applying this, I'm storing this into a force or into a vector three, I'm applying that as a force and I'm multiplying by speed. But if I continue to hold down this button, it's continuing to add this force every single frame. Um, conceptually, what I wanna do is I just want to detect what what the current speed value is and say, if we're going faster than that, um, just cap it, just keep it at the max. So I'm going to enforce a max speed. To do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, add a custom function called enforce max speed. It's always a good convention to call your functions to what, what exactly it's doing. Um, and furthermore, to break out things a little bit, like you don't wanna have all this code here necessarily, um, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna I'm gonna break that into a separate function. Right below, um, just like before, void. It's not returning anything. I just need to step by step do this thing line by line. Um, so let's name that properly. Enforce max speed. Um, and for this, all I need to do. Let's pseudo code this. Um, if the player's current speed is faster then we want then cap it cap it at our max speed okay so the first thing that we we might see that we want and we could maybe start typing this out if um the way to get the the player's current speed is to access the rigid body component um don't forget this is the player this rigid body component right here, um, we want to access that and we can get the current velocity or the current speed um, from this component. So since we already have access to it, which we did up here, right? Um, and start and from, from the tutorial, we had our rigid body component, we got the rigid body and we stored it right, right in here. So anytime we want anything having to do with this rigid body component, since we've already searched for it and gotten it, um, I can just access it through here. So if, Rigid body component, right? Just make sure that whatever you named it inside of the thing that you stored it into, right? Stored it into here. Um, we can access that. So rigid body component dot velocity. Now this would this would give us our x y z um, our our vector that we're moving in. But actually, I want to compare it to a value. I want to say if it's above this value, then then we're moving too fast. And that would be the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, we'd have to make some weirder comparison. So if we access the velocity, we can actually access the, access the um, velocity as a value by typing in magnitude. And this is specifically giving us the, um, the uh, length of the vector. So every single, every single frame that we're moving, um, our, our ball is gonna be here, then it's saying, I want to move to here this distance between these two things this is our um this is the magnitude of our velocity and um if this gets too much right like every single frame if it's this much we're moving even faster than than this so the short the shorthand right here i know this is probably kind of complicated but if you do rigid body dot velocity dot magnitude um, this will return our the value of our current speed if it's greater than um now we need, we want this to be max speed, right? Um, but this doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to add, um, and this is actually another, this is a convention that I'm gonna break and based off of your tutorial series. But instead of doing public, I'm actually gonna do something called serialize field. <clears throat> and what this does is this will expose this to the inspector just like making it public, right? Right. Like we'll see this value, uh, just like we see speed right here. It, we'll see it in the inspector. Um, but public actually means more than one thing. Um, public will expose it in the inspector, but public will also mean that from another script, I can access that value and change it. I don't necessarily want that. Um, so all you need to all all you need to remember is that serialized field will expose it to the in, the inspector, um, but it will keep it private. Um, so you can just copy along if that didn't make sense. But serialize field, 
Um, what type of value am I creating? I'm creating a float. Um, and what do I want to call it? I want to call this max speed. And I can even give this a default. I'm, I'm going to default this at, um, let's default this at 10. I think that would be fine. Maybe 15 is fine too. Um, we'll default that to 10. So now, now that we've made this, uh, we can actually put this down here. You see that it, it now accepts that. So we're saying if the value of our current speed, so our current speed value that we got from the rigid body is greater than what our intended max speed is, then we want to cap our speed. So now at this point, um, I could actually save that or I could save this just to test. I could come over here. Always good to periodically test. You'll see that we now see max speed in the inspector, um, but this is this value is private, which is much better coding convention. Keep your variables private if you can. Um, cap at our max speed. So how to do that? Again, we need to access the rigid body. We can determine our speed by getting it as a value from the velocity. Um, but if we want to change it, um, we'll do something similar. We're going to access the rigid body component dot velocity. So we're actually going to set the velocity um, according to whatever the value. Uh, and let's let's do this. We're, we actually have to store this as a vector three, which is an x y z position. So it's a little bit more complicated. Um, you may not understand that, and this is fine, but um, we're going to access the component again. Uh, we want the velocity, so we're going to, to reassign the velocity to be the velocity, if I do the keyword normalized, this is just going to return it as a, um, as a zero or one value, so you, it kind of crushes it down to, um, not take into account all these weird how far this is how you know what weird diagonal is this calculating um, this is just going to give us a direction um, but in a much smaller scale and once we do this uh, we can actually just multiply this by our max speed so that that's all this is doing um, and this is weird vector math you may not need to know this uh, but Every single fixed update frame, after we apply our force, we double check it and say, our, let's enforce our max speed. If we're moving faster than we want to, according to this max speed, um, then reassign our velocity to be um, our direction. That's, that's this whole thing is our direction times our speed. And so we'll have our direction. So you can imagine this moving diagonal, um, our direction, and then the, the speed will increase that, that vector to whatever the max speed is. So let's try this out. Let's make sure that this is still working. <clears throat> Save this. You can actually change the value here if you want, but I think 10 is probably going to be good. Hit play. We can still collect our, our um, collectibles. But now when we're moving and we start falling, you'll see that even gravity, right? We're even... Even gravity is getting minimized by this 10. Um, but I actually think that's fine. And I think that'll work for what we want. So now that we have the player set up, um, in future videos, I'm going to walk you through how to build a few mechanics. And maybe we'll learn a little bit of scripting fundamentals along the way.